So you're trying to get yourself out there. Not like that. I mean, you're trying to get yourself out there onto the internet so that people can find your business. Well, if that's the case, then I've got you covered. In this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about four things that you should get set up and ready to go, and then I'm going to show you how to link them all together, therefore creating your online presence. So step number one is to set up your Google profile. We're going to be doing two things here. The first is setting up your Google profile so that we can set up our Gmail account. Now, I'm also going to show you how to set up your Google My Business account so that you can be sure that your brick and mortar location shows up on Google Maps when people search for your industry on their phone. Obviously, if you don't have a brick and mortar location that you want to advertise, then you can just skip this step and go to step number two, which I'm going to be putting in a timestamp right here. So let's actually get started with the Google My Business account first. So Google My Business is just your dashboard that controls your local business listing on Google Maps. That's all it is. It's going to affect how your business looks when it's listed in a Google search and also how it looks when someone searches it on Google Maps like this. So in order to set this up, you're gonna wanna go to business.google.com and you're gonna need a Google account to do this. So if you don't, just go ahead and quickly open up a new tab and search Google account. Then just click on the first link and then click on create an account. It's super easy to walk through their signup process and it's also free. This is also how you set up a Gmail because it's basically the same thing. Your Gmail account is your Google account. So once you click on create my account, it's going to instantly prompt you to create that Gmail. Easy peasy. Let me squeezy. Okay, so now that you have a Google account and a Gmail, you can close out of that tab and go back to Google My Business. From here, you're going to go to the top right corner and click on sign in. After that, you can choose to add a location with an address and category that best fits your business. Then it's just going to ask for a phone number and a website URL. And for now, you can just click on I don't need a website because in step four, I'm going to show you guys how you can build a website and then you can come back and add the site to your business account on Google. But this is just where it goes. After you do that, it's going going to ask you to verify your address. And what Google is going to do is they're going to send you a postcard to that address that you just signed up with, and it's going to have a code on it. And whenever you receive it, it will have instructions on that postcard on how to verify your address. Basically, just go back to the website and enter in the verification code from the postcard, and that's it. Super easy. I'm sure I'm gonna have people on both sides of the spectrum here watching this video. Whether you're someone who loves social media and is really looking forward to creating one for your business, or you're someone who doesn't really care much for social media and you're probably letting out an annoyed sigh and a shrug at the thought of creating one for your business. No matter what, you're gonna have to build one, especially in this day and age. And it's really important for every business to have a social media outreach as well as a website. But there's two sort of categories that you can go into when it comes to creating your social media accounts. You can use social media for essentially the equivalent of a digital portfolio where you just post photos of projects and completed works periodically, or you can focus on content focused social media platforms like TikTok or YouTube. Now these content focused platforms are going to require a lot more attention where you post daily or weekly videos about your industry or related things to your business that will attract large audiences. And then you can take those large audiences and drive that traffic to your site and eventually to your business. Examples of this content focused media would be making TikTok videos about specific niche topics in your industry. Let's say you're a dentist. You can make short little one minute videos about dental hygiene, like simple tips and tricks on how to floss or how to, I don't know, whiten your teeth fast. <laughs> These are simple and quick videos to increase engagement and solve problems. Then once you have their attention, you'll mention your business and then point them to the direction of your website. Now examples about the portfolio style social media would just be posting a bunch of pictures about your office or satisfied customers or recommended products on your Instagram or Facebook like this. And you'll notice they all look just like digital portfolios. Now, if you want to create one of these accounts, it's unbelievably easy to do so. And there's endless amounts of YouTube tutorials on how to get started with each and every platform. If you don't already know, this video would be like two hours long if I tried to explain in detail how to use every single social media platform and how to create accounts for them and how to be successful in them. So I'm not going to get into all of that right now. The point is just pick one and get started. And if you're a little overwhelmed with the whole idea of social media, then just pick two platforms and post on them maybe once a week. That's it. Now, the beautiful thing about social media platforms nowadays is that unprofessionally edited videos are becoming more and more popular and do just as well, if not better, than professionally edited videos. I mean, take a look at these super successful TikTok videos and compare that video quality to this video right here. It doesn't have to be perfect and super cool. Sometimes the content can make the video do really well on its own. So at the end of the day, you don't need to go out there and buy an expensive camera and a 
whole bunch of equipment just to do the whole social media. You can just use your phone camera and just make things happen. Okay, so step number three is gonna be setting up branding for your company. Again, the point of this video is to walk you through how to get an online presence. So I'm assuming that you're starting with nothing. If you already have your company colors and logo, then you're good to go. But if you don't, I'm gonna show you guys how you can choose them right now. So choosing company colors is relatively straightforward and easy to decide on. Obviously, if there's a color that makes sense and is prominent in your industry, and you'll know what I mean when I say that, then obviously you should go with that color. For example, if you're a lawn care company, maybe you wanna consider using green or brown in your logo because it's the same color as soil and grass. On the other hand though, if you're a tech company, one specific color doesn't necessarily scream out tech, so you can kind of choose whatever color you want. That's just a simple example though. Obviously, if you're a lawn care company, you could totally use whatever color you want, but sometimes it helps to choose a color that is synonymously used to symbolize whatever your industry is. Whenever I choose colors for a website or a logo, I usually like to stick to three basic colors. Most of the time I actually only stick to two, but three would be the max. You'll want a base color, which is usually like a neutral white or cream or light gray. Then you're gonna want an accent color and a secondary color. Or in just the case of two colors, then you just want a base color and an accent color. Now, most of the time, the base and secondary colors are gonna be black and white, and then the accent color is just gonna be whatever you choose for your business. Take a look at a few of these examples. Notice how most of these logos stick to this same color scheme that I was talking about. All of these professional logos usually have a max of two or three colors total. They all look minimalistic and sleek and professional. Now, take a look at this logo. Not that there's anything wrong with it in particular, it just has a lot going on, and in my opinion, just way too many colors. Now you've picked your colors that you wanna use for your business. So now we can create a logo completely for free. So I'm gonna open up a new tab on the browser and go to logomaker.com, but without the E. From here, you can search from over a million different graphics in the top left corner. You can add basic shapes and text from the left-hand side of the screen, and you can change the color and opacity of everything you want on the right side of the screen. Now, if you actually wanna watch a tutorial of me building a logo using this website, then click on the link in the top right corner. Now, that link's also gonna be in the description, of course. But for the sake of keeping this video short and sweet, I'm gonna just bring one into existence with a snap of my fingers. Three, two, one. Here we go, perfect. This is just an example of what you can create using this software. Now, when you're ready to download your logo, go up to the top right corner and click on save. And then, and this is really important, if you wanna download the free version of your logo, you can click on download low resolution PNG file and follow the prompts until you can download it for free. But I always highly recommend paying for the high resolution file. I think it's gonna be around 20 or $30, but that way you're not getting a small logo, you're getting a much larger resolution for that logo. And then you can put it on t-shirts or you can put it on a company truck, however you wanna use it. But again, if free is all you're looking for, then you can just download the low resolution file for free. All right, friends, it's time for the meat and potatoes of the video. Now I wanna let you guys in on a little secret. Just just because you build a website doesn't mean all of a sudden you're gonna have all of this extra business and everyone's gonna know who you are. Building a website is a lot like building a magazine. Just because you made a magazine doesn't mean all of a sudden now everyone has it in their hand. You're gonna have to put in the work of distributing it and promoting it in as many places as possible. A website is the same thing. It's a place where you can store information, images and videos about your business or yourself, but just because you put it together doesn't mean that everyone can see it. You're gonna have to get creative and probably use your social media platforms as well as SEO techniques to actually get your website in front of as many eyes as possible. Now, SEO stands for search engine optimization and it's an art all in itself. I'll let you guys do your own research on how to do all of that, but for now, we need to get your site up and running so that clients can find you online if they Google your business name. All right, so the first item on the docket is creating your own custom domain name. Some people decide to name their company something plain and obvious like Jerry's Diner, for example, which is probably a very common business name and you'll probably have a very difficult time finding an available domain name for it. Trying to find a domain name in this day and age is difficult to say the least because there's trillions and billions of companies out there that have to come up with very unique names to be able to find a domain name. And if you have an idea and you wanna check if it's available, you can go to hostinger.com and then click on domains and use their domain checker to search the entire internet and see if that domain is available. Once you've chosen a domain, this is gonna be the same thing as your Gmail account and your social media username and also your business name. And this is really important. For example, let's say I create a business and it's called Nova Web Services. Then I would want my domain name to be novawebservices.com. And then I want my Gmail to be novawebservices at gmail.com. And then maybe my Instagram username is at 
Nova Web Services. Do you guys see where it comes all together? It's important that all of the individual nodes of your online presence all have the same uniform name. Now that you've chosen your domain name, which is also your business name and your username and pretty much the name for everything else that you create, it's time to purchase that custom domain name as well as sign up for your web hosting plan all at the same time. Now I've got the best deal that you can find on the internet that gives you 78% off of your hosting plan and a free custom domain name. So click on the first link that's down in the description or you can go to createaprowebsite.com slash hostinger and it'll take you to a page that looks like this. From here you can choose which hosting plan you wanna go with but I always recommend the premium shared hosting plan because it gives you a free domain name as well as a free SSL certificate, which is the encryption for your website, along with a whole bunch of other stuff. After that, you're going to select the period, which I always recommend 12 months because it's the same as your domain registration. Next, to make sure that the coupon code says create a pro website. And that's really important because that's how you get the big 78% off. After you check out and skip that questionnaire, you're gonna to want to install WordPress in the background. And finally, this is where you can claim your free domain name so you can enter it here. From here, you can click on edit your website and enter into your WordPress dashboard. Again, and guys, I've got a tutorial that walks you through this entire process without skipping any steps. I'm just going fast here to show you guys more of an overview of the process. From your WordPress dashboard, you can download an entire website template for free just like this. You'll notice that Starter Templates has templates for practically every industry out there. I'm gonna be choosing this one. From here, you can use Elementor, which is a free drag and drop page builder plugin to edit the entire website the way that you want it. I'm gonna add my social media that I created earlier on up here in the header, and then I'm also gonna add it down in the footer. I even created a fake Instagram just to show you guys what it would really look like. Now I'm gonna add this calendar widget that lets people schedule appointments with you directly on your website, and it connects directly with the Gmail that you guys created earlier on in the video. If you wanna watch a full tutorial on how to add this booking widget to your website and how to use it, then click on the link in the top right corner. I'm also gonna configure the contact form to send emails to my business Gmail that I created earlier on. After all of that, I'm gonna insert the logo that I created as well, and then we're done. We created your Google account, your logos and branding, and signed up for social media platforms platforms all for free. And we even built your website for free. The only thing that we had to purchase was a domain name and web hosting, which is required to have a website anyways. But all of that in one purchase, you now have your entire online presence ready to go. Just be sure not to forget to add your website URL to your Google My Business account. And also all of the videos that I've mentioned throughout this entire video are all linked down in the description below. So you can click on whichever links you need to, come back to this video and make sure that you get everything together. I'm gonna let all of that information simmer with you guys and end it here, but if you're interested in learning how to fully customize your website and you wanna watch a full tutorial from start to finish on how to build a website with WordPress, click on the link in the top right corner. I'll see you guys there.